The 2019 elections campaign trail has been one of the craziest we've ever seen. All the parties have been out in full force and it's been pretty hard to miss this. The ANC is on a path of renewal. Sound the call to come together. We are the ones we have been waiting for. They have even claimed the days of the week, ANC Sundays, EFF Red Fridays. I suppose Blue Mondays doesn't quite work, hey? <laughs> and of course, being South Africa, there had to be music. We have a packed ballot this year with 48 parties vying for the throne and we're seeing a lot of new players. There's the African Transformation Movement which counts Mzwane Lemani among its ranks. And if they get some seats in parliament, we'll hear more of this. <laughs> Patricia DeLille is back in the game with her new party and this familiar South African is feeling good. So good, so good, so good, so good. So Patricia DeLille, I know as a first injustice and still continue to fight corruption. Then there's the African Security Congress, the African Covenant Party, and the Land Party, among others. The ANC launched their manifesto in Durban in early January, and look who was there. The former president, as you can hear, the crowds on their knees are screaming. Oh, wow. The DA wasted no time in bashing the ANC, even placing a Gupta statue in Bloemfontein at the church where the ANC was founded. But it hasn't been smooth sailing for the opposition. My money told supporters. 44 out of 10 South Africans <laughs> don't have a job. And his party's former head of policy, Gwen Wenya, became the 45th when she resigned weeks before the manifesto launch, saying the party leadership gave her no budget. The DA's head of policy, Gwen Nguyenya, has resigned, pending a resignation letter to DA leader Musi Maimane. Nguyenya alleges the party simply doesn't take policy seriously. Maybe this is where all the money went. Corrupted and sold out by the power hungry. And There's corrupt. that statue again. <laughs> With anger and hate. Childish Gambinos, this is America copied again. But guys, there were also some rather uncomfortable moments. The president experienced his own service delivery for the first time. Yeah, levels of frustration are quite high. He was also criticized for his comments on immigration. Everybody just arrives. We are going to bring this to an end. The DA unveiled a billboard bearing names of victims from the Marikana and the Life Estimini tragedies. And after initially defending it, the truth hurts. They did a U-turn. Uh, this was an honest mistake. <laughs> there were these comments from the main character of Gangster State, Ace Mahashul. <laughs> the book's Joburg launch was met with disruption. The protesters have ripped off copies of the book and are holding up posters that say hashtag hands off Ace. And things also took a nasty turn for broadcaster Karima Brown. Last night, Mr. Julius Malema put my telephone number on a blast as the youngsters say on Twitter, and I have basically been receiving uh, threats that involve uh, threats of rape. Well, so much for the World Press Freedom Day. Malema did take the tweet down, but this was why. Twitter comes to me through email. Remove that nonsense, otherwise we'll lose it. <laughs> the Freedom Front Plus took court action against Black First Land First for this stance and their membership. Our constitution is clear, blacks only. The party wants to participate in an election are not allowed to base its membership on the race. And what was this about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, oh, it's been a lot, guys. With all this drama, how are we supposed to know who to vote for? In fact, are we even going to vote? Do we even know? Uh, uh, no, 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 no.